hello world welcome to today's tutorial and for today's video i'll be hosting the last project i did on my youtube channel which was a node project and as well as a javascript project i'll be showing us how we can host this using a roku and netlify respectively now let me show you a list of steps of what we're gonna do on the server side we're gonna follow seven steps as you can see here and then on the client side which will be hosted on netlify we're gonna follow these five steps so stay with me follow along like and subscribe to the video as i'm sure you'll be learning something new on this tutorial so heading straight to the first thing we need to do which is according to what we have here is to create a git signal file on the server folder now this is very important for us because we do not want to push the node modules and we don't we do not also want to push the emv file to um, the remote repository so we want this to uh, to not be pushed now let me quickly create the git ignore file so so dot git ignore So on the git ignore file, we are going to have um, our node modules, which is node underscore modules, as well as the dot env file. So by adding this here, it's going to be ignored by the time we push this to a remote repository. The next thing we need to do is to install a local on our machine. And there's this um instruction we can follow on the heroku documentation website but one thing to note is i already have heroku installed on my machine i'll be sure to drop this link in the description on youtube but if you don't have heroku installed there's no way you can follow this because we'll be using the heroku cli and for us to use the heroku cli you need to have it installed on your machine so there's a download link for mac there's one for windows and there's also one for ubuntu so whatever machine you are using you can install accordingly but for me i already did that now let's host this project on a remote repository uh, for us to do that we will need to log in to iroku so i have access to iroku because i have it installed so if you don't you won't have access to iroku on the cli so what i'm going to do is to type the Roku login so with this command I'll be able to log into the Roku I click login login so it shows that i'm already logged in now i have i'm logged in also on the cli the next thing i'm going to do is to name our project so i can just say iroku creates um let's call this project angle code angle list let me just say code angle list code angle list So that's creating our projects for us. Each project's name is unique. So if I go to this particular URL, let me copy this. You can see we have an empty project, like a, a new, a boilerplate project on the browser which is called code angle list so we can access this on the roku dashboard so let's try to do that let me try to log in to roku on the on the dashboard so roku.com so i can just search for this project called code angle list so while that is loading i would like to create a file called proc file with this file it allows the roku know how to serve the application so 
what we can do is to let's create a file called proc file so inside this file you can just have um, web web node uh the entry point of our application is server.js so if it if we tap type server.js in our application it kind of runs our application so the command you are going to put here is any command that runs your application so for us it is node server.js so node server.js so let me save that and head back to the dashboard okay this has finished loading so i can search for code angle lists okay now to deploy this application i guess that's what's left on the list okay to deploy this application we can run some commands we've already run heroku login and then we need to initialize um git we haven't done that so let me initialize git git init then we can just copy this command heroku git remote whatever you see there so let's paste that in and then let's load that up so it's going to create a git repository for us a remote repository now we can now add git add all this is going to add all the files in our project excluding the um what's it called the node modules and the dot emv file so we can now commit git commit dash m we can say prepare for deployment okay our app is prepared for deployment now we can now push to iroku master so we can just run git push iroku master So I guess this may take a while for it to run as it's going to be installing some dependencies which are in our application and things like that. So as you know, this um, is completely free. We have limited users. It's just a personal project. So everything we do here is completely free. So let me refresh this project. So we might likely get some different message, maybe an error probably. Yeah, like I thought. So what I can do again, let me, when we check the endpoints we have on the project itself, we can see that it's called for slash all videos. So it should be pointing to that particular URL. So for slash all videos. um let me see let me check the network and refresh nothing to preview so okay one more thing we can do is on the roku dashboard we need to on the settings here we need to um put in the config configuration variables because we are making use of that in our dot emb file so I'm going to copy this Google API key. I'm going to paste it here. And then the value for the key, I'm also going to paste it in the value part here. So I'm going to add that. Okay, now that that has been added, let me hide. We can see if the changes has been yes now we have access to all the data in our api just like we did on our local machine when i was creating the project in the last tutorial now we have a live url so if i head over to the front end of, um, of my application and i change on the app.js part i change from local os 5000 to this particular url and i save and i use live server to restart the application open with live server we should still get a list of our 
YouTube videos. But the difference now is we can do that on any machine because we have a live URL as we can see here, which is fantastic. So I think that's all for the for the hosting on the back end. So what we need to do now is to host things on the front end. So I can just mark everything here as done. This is done. Done. We've done this. Set up Heroku. Deploy the application. Define the configuration variables, and then we now we run the application and it's running well. So the next thing we need to do is to host our client side um, projects on GitHub. So let's quickly do that. So on the let me clear this up. I'm going to navigate to the path for the client side. So CD client side, CD client. So it doesn't no git repository no git repository has been initialized sorry so i can just do git init so git add all git commit dash m i can just say initial commit so let me head over to github and then create a new project a new github project on github so new repository so we can just call this angle angle list so it's public So we are already following this instruction. So what we need to do next is just continue from here. So it would know that that's the project we are trying to push to. Then lastly, we can just run git push you origin master. It's going to be master instead of main. So while that is still loading, I can just head over to Netlify netlify.com because that's where we are hosting our front end so everything we are doing here is completely free so has this been pushed yes so let me refresh and you see that our front end projects would have been pushed on github here so as you can see we have our files on a remote repository now heading over to netlify let me log in to netlify So when we get to Netlify, I'm going to try to access that project which we called Angle List on Netlify. So with that, we should um, have access to um, the project. So we can now look, um, click on New Site from Git. We are using GitHub, we are not using GitLab or Bitbucket. So that's going to take a little while to load up. So it's going to bring up all my remote repository on GitHub. So I'll just search for, okay, yeah, it is Angle List. You see, Netlify already has access to that. So it's on hosted on the master branch. To start the application, we don't need any command. But if we're running maybe a React project or Angular project, we might need to run something like um, ng serve or npm start well we don't need that here so we will just click deploy um, site straight up so the site is deploying so while it is deploying let's tick off some of the things we've done here so we've we've hosted the project on github we've accessed the press on the dashboard we've in fact deployed the project but we need to change the name okay to change the name, we'll head over to site settings and then change site name. Let's just call it. Hopefully, someone hasn't used this name. So, Angle List. Let me save that. Okay, no one has used the name. So, when let's head over to angulelist.netlify.app and let's see if our project is hosted live. 
yes as you can see we've successfully hosted a node project and a javascript project without paying any money without um paying any form of subscription fee so what you can do is um maybe if you have your own project you can follow these steps and then change the name probably by a domain name and then host it on netlify connect it to netlify so it will have a more unique identity and doesn't carry the netlify app uh, name so I, I won't do that in this video i think it, that's something you can work on yourself or maybe in later videos i might work on that but for now this is where the video ends so our uh, project is live so anywhere in the world this particular url can be accessed um so that's it for this video thank you very much for staying tuned like and subscribe if you love the video and i will see you again very soon thank you guys